So unless you've been living under a rock for the last couple of weeks, you have probably seen the rumours that Jigsaw will be joining Koi for the European League in Stage 2. Now, hand on heart, I do not know if these rumours are any more true than you do, but I've been wanting to make a video on Jig for a little while, so I guess this is a good excuse to finally get around to doing it. Now, for this particular uh, replay file, I have decided to go with Jigsaw's best performance in Stage 1 of the OS League. This was against Wildcard. Unfortunately, contextually, this match kind of didn't really mean a whole lot at this point because Bliss had already locked themselves in for the Copenhagen Major, which I'm sure I will touch on a little bit later in this video because, spoiler alert, that uh, didn't go all that well for them. But for Jigsaw, Jigsaw specifically, it was a really strong stage for him, and he is a player that has gone um, with an upwards trajectory really for the last couple of years he went from team skyfire so tier 2 os into team bliss um back in i want to say 2021 he got rookie of the year and unfortunately bliss actually then didn't go on to qualify for apac south we, we all know that running meme at this point um but then he joined um team ig so invictus gaming Unfortunately, mixed success there, as we know, Apex South, not the, the best of playing conditions, so extrapolate from that what you will. And then I guess it all went full circle, he went back to Bliss for this year. And uh, although Oda was I'm pretty sure statistically the best player on the team, um, if not one of the best in the world, Jigsaw still had a very, very solid stage and helped spearhead Bliss's success, known for really his success on the entry. Uh, and Bliss, especially on attack, had a, a real knack for getting really, really good information. Putting Jigsaw in playmaking positions, which was uh, very much ideal. Um, so yeah, it's going to be super interesting to see if these rumors are true. If Jigsaw does go across to the Europa League, how he ends up performing there. Because the, the jump up from OS to EU is obviously going to be huge. OS is... Without a doubt, one of the weaker sub-regions in EU, without really much of a doubt, is one of the strongest sub-regions. So it's going to be a huge step up. But we have seen this in the past. Um, the one and only real export overseas. Well, to E specifically, I mean, you could sort of make the case that MAG is an export to Japan League at this point. But obviously Virtue, who jumped across to G2. And that was a pretty rough trajectory. I, I think a lot of people probably now at this point have sort of forgotten, but when he joined G2, they were kind of a little bit down bad and it took them a long time to get to the position that they are now, reigning world champions. Do I think Jigsaw, if he joined the Koi roster as it is now, would be contending for SIs? Probably not. It seems like there's a bit of a t turmoil in the team. There's other rumors going around, so I think Blur might be another player slated to join the team. So who really knows how it's going to mix up? And again, such a big gap. In between stages now that a lot can happen nice little flank there from jig making plays as you would you would sort of expect so who knows it, no one can really predict what's going to happen in stage two not just the transfers but how those would play out anyway and uh yeah not a not a bad little flank there from uh jigsaw showing us what he's made of there in the first round and so then the discussion probably for me and i'm sh sure for you watching is Will Jigsaw actually do well overseas? And my gut instinct is yes, in the right team with the right systems. But then it, it's quite easy, I think, to rebut that, right? And say, well, look at how Bl uh, Bliss did at, at Copenhagen, right? 21st to 24th, um, the first group of teams to get knocked out. They definitely didn't look like themselves at all during that tournament and lacked the confidence that we sort of know them for their trademark in OS. So it is a little bit concerning. But again, how much of that comes down to the team system? How much of that was Jigsaw's individual performance? I'm not really going to judge that. <laughs> Jigsaw uses the Oryx to, to bounce the Blitz. But yes, I think that that's certainly going to be a very, very interesting discussion point. And you put yourself in Jigsaw's position, right? Again, if this roster rumor does end up being true, he joins the team. You are only the second ever player from from OS, APAC more generally, um, 
to go and join an EU team, a lot of the talk of the town and a lot of the pressure is and the expectation is going to sort of be on your shoulders, right? And he's probably going to be labelled as, can he live up to Virtue's expectations? Can he go on to also win a world championship? There's going to be a bit of pressure in that regard. On top of the fact that you are going to one of the most difficult domestic competitions to play in as well. So, I, I, it's going to be difficult, um, but at the same time, I think Jigsaw is well and truly good enough at his best and in the right team to fill those expectations. But it's certainly going to be interesting to see when he plays against more competent teams that might be a bit better in shutting him down, how he'll be able to adjust on the fly against stiffer competition. Because, again, really kind of outside of this game here against Wildcard, which didn't really mean a whole lot at the time, Bliss just rolled everyone in domestic competition, yet they still then go overseas and found themselves rolled. So it's this really, really weird dynamic in trying to position where OS teams and, and OS players, even the best in the region, really sort of are in terms of the global landscape. And now one of one of Jigsaw's sort of trademarks, I guess, uh, we'll probably see it on the uh, attack on the entry as well, is getting himself in powerful positions and, and trying to lock them down and trying to suffocate the opposition as much as possible and we'll see it here in open area so he's playing on that hatch for drop off it has been pre-opened up and this is a difficult position to clear because there's a lack of vertical pressure and there's the the opportunity and the ability for that defender to just fall down the hatch as we saw there get out pretty risk-free jigsaw obviously can elect to try and hold that a little bit longer there but statistically speaking Wildcard are going to eventually get control and you're better off just sort of falling back, especially when you have your teammates collecting kills as well. There's no real need to be finding kills and yeah, Bliss is just going to compound the pain. And this is also probably one of the reasons why Jigsaw wasn't stacking huge numbers like he may have previously, is, is Bliss domestically, everyone was playing really, really well. Everyone pretty much outside of Fisher guys posting numbers. That's not Fisher's job. Anyway, you also had Oda doing a huge job in the frag department for this first stage as well. So Jigsaw's numbers, to some, maybe if you don't watch Ose, would be like, oh, this is kind of a mediocre player. Why would Koi want to pick him up? But again, he has a knack for stepping up in big, important moments, finding impact frags. So statistics don't always tell the full story, especially with Jigsaw. Because you have rounds like this where he's done his job well. The rest of the team though, is stepping up. I kind of cursed him a little bit. He does get slapped there by Sawyer. But it doesn't really mean a whole lot. And Bliss able to clean up. And I think now is probably just a good time to give a little bit of context maybe to my viewers who don't watch Osa or aren't particularly familiar with it. In terms of the landscape of the scene at the moment, it it is a little bit grim in, in some respects. The depth of competition is quite low at the moment. We are seeing a lot of teams currently disband, players move on. Due to the break, um, due to, unfortunately, the lack of viability in esports, the, the salaries, if they are there, are, are very, very low. Um, I don't, I can't speak necessarily on behalf of these players. I don't know exactly what they're making, but I can't imagine it's a whole lot. And even teams like Wildcard, for example, who are in share program, again, still probably aren't making huge amounts to really make it a viable full-time career. Um, and that's why it is so noteworthy so newsworthy that when a player jumps over to EU because you jump over to EU um, again you still not, might not be making millions but you're probably going to be making a far more livable wage um, than your typical player in OS but to make that transition and to sort of put yourself in the spotlight you need to be a really really good player you need to be the top one to your top three players in OS even to just get a look in by an EU, EU team and uh, that doesn't even mean you're going to get trialed um, and that's a whole other debacle I don't know how EU teams um, would even want to go about trialing a team from OS given ping discrepancies and all that that would be a logistical um, nightmare but being an OS player it, it's very rough and that's why typically we see these teams struggle overseas because they don't have the, the resources some don't even have the time to practice as much as other regions, for example. So it, it's rough. It's tough going. It's really a grind for a lot of these players. And the end goal, I'm assuming for most of them, right, is to follow this trajectory of Jigsaw to try and be one of the best players or teams in the region and either back yourself in as a really good team to find success overseas or the more likely outcome, which is still a very low percent because only one player has ever done it before, is to be that player that gets picked up and can find success overseas and hopefully ingrain yourself in you know the eu ecosystem 
or the NA ecosystem. Um, but very much easier said than done, and that's why Virtue is the only other player that's ever done it. And look, it's probably a, a bit of a personal bias, but I, I really, really do hope that if Jigsaw does actually go overseas, that he does really well, um, because it puts Os on the map a little bit, and hopefully we'll have maybe other teams look at other players in the regions in the region because jigsaw um whilst extremely extremely good uh, there are other players that are equally um could do well overseas as well given the right team the right role um oda also on team bliss is probably another good example of that and i wouldn't be surprised if he also has um had interest or at least other members of other teams you know right raise an eyebrow and ask the question of maybe we could try this guy out and see what he's made of and I'm sure in the future there's going to be other players in Os as well that step up to the mark. Um, but as I sort of said before, the depth of the scene isn't really there at the moment. So in terms of the long-term viability of that, I don't know. I'm a little bit skeptical, but you never know. Enigmas like Jigsaw might come along in the next couple of years and fill that void and then also be in a position to make that leap. Who knows? And we'll have to wait and see. Focusing in on the gameplay for a second, maybe. Uh, Jigsaw again, running around the Oryx. I do apologize for the site bugging out. Typically, I can fix this by going back five seconds, but I don't know. It's not fixing for some reason this time, so we will have to deal with that. And again, he's, he loves playing these these fall-off positions with the hatches here on bank, where he'll lock down, you know, elevator or open area. He'll play contact, play a bit of pressure, try and maybe find a pick, but he doesn't push the boundaries too much. And I think that's probably one of his one of his strengths, generally speaking. Um, a lot of fraggers, especially in O's for some reason, have a tendency to push the bounds a little bit too much and will play unfavorable positions. Um, you know, sort of overstay their welcome in a lot of cases, whereas as Jigsaw will typically play contact, rotate, fall off, and then try and find an alternate angle or an alternate position in order to better his chances of finding a kill or winning the round. We'll see how he plays this post. As he could look to maybe rotate up a hatch or go back up the stairs. This should be a pretty tricky clear. As there is vert pressure from wildcard. But it looks like he might catch Cairo out. And he does on a pinch. And that leaves Logic on the Monty. Now if I remember correctly, this ends up being quite close. I think I casted this. I Honestly, I can't remember. My memory can be quite bad with these things. And yeah, leaves it in the 1v1. Now, he does have the Oryx Dash available, but he misses. Oh, and then he gets it the second time, but no time left. <laughs> so he gets on the diffuser, and uh, Logic able to uh, win that out. So that was a little bit unfortunate there for Jigsaw. Probably could have been a touch cleaner, but nonetheless, uh, well played by Log. So we jump across then into the attacking half. The scoreline is 3-3, so very close between these two teams. And I think Bliss, to be fair, again, they were already qualified at this point, so this match didn't mean a whole lot. But I think they were still fairly motivated to try and go for that perfect stage. They knew they were the strongest team. They sort of really wanted to prove that and also try to just ride a little bit of momentum through the rest of the stage, which makes sense. Oh. Okay, so that was a little bit awkward. Look at that from uh, Tuhan's perspective. Who gets traded. And I was, I was just about to go on a little bit of a tangent about how Jigsaw typically, and Border is probably the perfect example of a map for this, where he has such a predetermined plan every attack, and he will always get the map control that he wants because Bliss have really good pre-placed drones. Um, but this time he sort of gets caught out gets caught out by a little bit of a, a strange play here from Tuhan. He just peeks the window, gets that kill. I mean, things like that happen, and... Jigsaw on the entry note is going to know that it can be volatile at times. So we'll see now how he tries to bounce back for the rest of this half. So it's a fairly similar uh, attacking pattern here from Jigsaw again, as we kind of expect. This time being a little bit more conscious of stock windows. So look, he has learned from the previous round, which is good to see. And it is a top four defense. Lines of sight through the top square, which... Increases the difficulty of this entry a little bit for Jigsaw. He does also have this pre-placed in Jan from the prep phase as well. So that could serve some nice information through the mid-round. Especially if Jigsaw wants to push through top square and try and apply pressure on that janitor door. Again, he's going to be cautious of this line of sight, of course. But 
it's unusual that you would have a player up close and there's, there's already attackers on the repel, so that's not really viable. So it's just deep angles that he needs to be mindful of and that's what he looks for. He's doing all the right things so far. Cook a grenade, he'll deal with the Banshee that he spotted before. So he's kept that in mind. And it's all very standard and safe so far. You can also feed information long desk. I think that's on to Edpan on the Warden. Just trying to aid those on the Repel because he knows that that Repel pressure is going to be really useful for him as well later on in the round. Doesn't look like Bliss has been able to capitalize on that heaps. But nonetheless, there is a bit of pressure now on both teams, right? Clock pressure on Bliss to make a move. And so we'll see Jigsaw move forward. He's trying to find a pick in through Jan. And it's actually Bliss the first to fall. Overly aggressive there from Sawyer, but Jigsaw able to punish and now has an entry point in towards the objective. But he is really low on HP. This is the best of positions. Play a bot square as well. This is going to be really rough for Bliss. They sh really struggled to play, I think, off that information that Jigsaw was feeding. Uh, Wildcard really didn't give them an inch, didn't play into that repel game. And unfortunately, that meant Jigsaw found himself a little bit stalled out. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, uh, parkouring the yokai drone on the Echo around. Don't know if I've seen that one before, but there you go. But again, it's very mm, repeatable, methodical entries from Jigsaw. I do fear a little bit that maybe, again, if he joins EU, that these sort of entries may become a little bit too predictable, especially against extremely resource-heavy teams that have the ability to have... People sit down and really break down a lot of these patterns and then find ways to make it more difficult. That said, Wildcard and Two Hunt especially has been trying to disrupt that. And he won it once before in stock, but there Jigsaw able to fight back and showing that, you know, he's not a one trick pony and can adapt on the fly a little bit, which is always good to see. And that adaptation is something that will be critical if he moves across. Well, it gets a bit of a freebie there. He'll take that. So, 3v5. Pretty important round for Bliss, trying to ward off map point. But they find themselves now in a good position. And Bliss have been a very, very good team in, in locking out advantageous positions. Bit of a blight on that after the Montang round previously, but this one's certainly looking much, much stronger. Good example here of Jigsaw not taking space for granted, just being cautious of blue stairs and making sure that no one's playing a very common rotation on the defense. So again, showing time and time again that he isn't just a, a brain dead run in fragger. Now he can't actually see that uh, that echo there, the Azami barricade was momentarily blocking that. It's just a bit difficult to see in the replays. And yeah, really good round from Bliss Jigsaw as well. Showing some good stuff on the entry. Oh, surprise, surprise. Uh, we are not watching the same round for the third time. This is very much round 10. Jigsaw doing identical entry. Uh, again, uh, the example that always comes to mind is Border Passport. That's where he always enters. <laughs> and it very much seems like Bank Top Square is the viable entry point as well, which makes sense for a couple of reasons. Because sort of irrespective of what the objective is on bank, it is a good place to spearhead your attacks. You could always try and go for lobby, but there's just too many more. There's more variables there. It's more difficult to manage. So 4v4. In fact, 4v3. So we'll see how Bliss go about trying to fight back into this round. And it's going to be tough. Jigsaw now sort of feeling the need to try and make a play as best he can. But you are going to need a little bit of luck here in, in trying to catch a defender out or getting good timing somewhere. Finds himself down bot main, doesn't make noise. And he just sort of sits and waits for Wildcard to make a bad move. You can spot for info as well. Hits a really nice quick peek there onto 
to Han. Not entirely sure if he had an info read there on to Logic, but Logic over peaks and Jigsaw punishes. And again, that's probably another trademark of his play is if an opponent, again, oversteps the mark a little bit, maybe over peaks into an angle for a little bit too long, more often than not, Jigsaw does not give second chances. If you screw up, you are going to the grave. And he showed that really nicely there in that 1v1. Now able to try and serve a bit of util out. Maybe might be able to find a yokai doing that. Not much else though. Obviously could try and find a kill and raid as well. Maybe unfortunate timing there onto Sawyer, who may have exposed feet. And Jigsaw would have gotten another. Not meant to be though. Call that will now go that he is bot main, but they've been able to flip it now. So a 1v2 against wildcard. And Sage able to clean up the last. So really good work there from Jigsaw. Just able to manipulate the map. And again, one of his trademarks. So then we enter round at number 11 of 12. So, spoiler alert, whoever wins this round goes on to win the game. If I haven't already spoiled the result. <laughs> and again, Jigsaw top square. So we'll see how he plays this position on this occasion. Keeping in mind last time, he did get stalled out a little bit from that top square to Jan transition. He found the pick, but then the rest of the team couldn't really find a whole lot of, of valuable space uh, and the repel game wasn't played into by the defense which can make things difficult as the attack you can find yourself stalled out again similar approach he's clearing angles really really methodically not leaving anything to chance or trying not to and he, yeah again sneaks forward inside a giant to try and find that early pressure he finds it and then he falls back he expects the trade just really, really well played. There's no Warden in play this time either. So we'll see those smokes come out from Bliss. Which does offer a little bit more protection for Jigsaw here. Who can now focus his efforts over towards Bot Square. As he holds that rotation down below. Which could be played into. Especially with Solus on the board. Might be looking to impact Trick the Plant. So, so far his reads have been quite good. Obviously we have... The outlines so we know that no one is below and hopefully bliss have a cam inside of open area maybe to try and give jigsaw the call that this is clear or at least allow him to maybe up be in a more powerful position can line up grenades as well lands that one onto cairo that's perfect i don't know what cams jigsaw is uh flicking he is sitting on jigsaw's cam so maybe it was the one in jan again in which case i'll know that play is down and now it's pretty much just as easy as sweeping up the stairs, or at least it should be. 2v3. Yeah, it gets caught off guard. So, oh, look, not particularly well played there towards the very end, but everything sort of leading up to that was well done. And it really should be a, a bliss round anyway in the 2v1. We'll let it roll through, see what happens. Yeah, Logic just zoned out there. Well played in the end by Bliss, who take the lead, and of course, we'll go on to win the map. So then we jump into round 12, the final round in this matchup where Bliss will end up defeating Wildcard 7-5 and an opportunity to sort of wrap up discussions and thoughts around the rumors. Bliss joining Koi, will it happen? Will it not? Again, I, I genuinely do not know from inside sources. I have just seen the public the rumors as everyone else has. Do I think it's possible? Yeah, sure. I think Jigsaw will be competent enough at an EU level to compete, to do well. Will he go on to sort of follow the footsteps of those before him in virtue and go on to win big championships? I don't know. Siege is volatile at the best of times. He could join Koi. Nothing happens. They have a terrible stage two and he gets booted back to Oz. He could go on, qualify for a major, have a good run, pretty much solidify his position and get on the radar of EU and NA teams for the next couple of years. Yeah. I really don't know. It's so, so tough to say. But I think with the right support team around him and the right mentality, Jigsaw, he can thrive. It's going to be a challenge. He's going to be versing much more difficult opponents. So it's going to be a bit of a shock to the system in that regard. Sure, maybe in the past he played some competent APAC South teams. But that was in a bit of a strange sandbox with, with the whole ping debacle. And then going back to Os where... You know, respectfully, that difficulty curve did lower. So Bliss goes 
to Copenhagen. They really struggled. But, who knows? It doesn't seem to have dissuaded Koi too much. And look, if Koi take that risk <laughs> and want to take him on, full respect to them because only one other player in the, what, six, seven year history of APAC CG Sports <laughs> has gone across. So it is extremely, extremely rare. And they have been some good players throughout the years of OS that maybe should have been given an opportunity overseas and weren't. So it's an exclusive club. I wish Jigsaw all the best if it happens. Koi all the best. It's certainly going to be fun to watch from a distance. And I'm sure everyone from OS, including me, will be cheering him on. Bit of a quiet round for Jigsaw here. Fisher going for the plant default, I think. Jigsaw sits above, gets crunched. So unfortunate there. Probably just predicted that a little bit too late. We'll see how Bliss go about closing this out. Another quick discussion point as well will be how does Bliss recover from this, right? If Jigsaw leaves the team, could leave Bliss in a very, very peculiar position as well in Oris. Will they be able to go back to back at Majors? Who knows? That's going to be tough um, in terms of who's going to fill that void. Again, I know there's names swirling around, but I don't think there's anything official, so we won't comment on that. But nonetheless, that will conclude the video. Jigsaw, will he join Koi, go over to EU? Who knows? We will have to wait and see, but I'm interested to hear your opinions based on that gameplay and what I've said. Do you think he has what it takes? Let me know down below, leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one.